Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sean Yazzie. I guess this will be like a return video, I guess, because I really don't know how else to categorize it. And you guys know, probably know by the title of the video what I'm going to talk about because I try to be open about everything and it's really hard because I feel like sometimes I can't talk to people about this certain thing. Like, honestly, I tried talking to my therapist about it and it just sometimes it just doesn't seem to work. So we're gonna try this I guess I'm just gonna jump into it guys and just like literally talk about it because I just feel like talking about it because um, sometimes I feel like YouTube for me personally is like an outlet and I see you guys as a support system sometimes because you guys do like daily honestly <laughs> like send me wishes and like good luck and I'm doing a good job or great video and stuff like that and it's super awesome I think and I seem to enjoy reading those comments and answering or trying to answer everyone back. My life is kind of hectic sometimes having two jobs and then trying to do YouTube all at once and post everything on social media and keep everything <laughs> updated. Honestly, sometimes it does get stressful in that aspect of me trying to upload things and be very public and open about my life. And I get that I only have a small following, but sometimes it just feels like a lot of people are intertwined in it sometimes. Like for example, um, people that um, know my family tend to tell my family what I post or what I say on these videos sometimes, which I find kind of weird because obviously I'm gonna find out about it, but anyways. Sometimes I feel like I'm lost. Really don't know what I feel like I'm doing. In January, I think it was like the second week of January. I think it was January 15th. It was a Sunday for sure. I remember it was a Sunday. And it was this year. So that uh, Sunday, I decided to write down on paper like a list of things I would say to people if I um, decided to um, end my life. I wrote it to, like, I categorized it to like where I would tell everyone what to say. So like, I put my main family and people that I know and just a lot of people that I feel like that would care to know. Like something I said last to them, I guess, or directed to towards them. I was feeling like super down at the time and just not really knowing what I want. And I just felt lost and I felt like nothing was being accomplished and nothing was getting done. And I just felt like I was worthless and that I felt like I really didn't matter to anybody that no one seemed to care or understand where I'm at in my life and all the struggles I'm going through. I get that the world doesn't revolve around me. I get that I make things complicated. I tend to overthink a lot of the time. Like, I even overthink what I'm overthinking. So I tend to like go in this circle of a cycle and I don't know, my brain never seems to stop. It just keeps going and going with thoughts rushing to my head and I seem to overthink everything and thinking about what other people are thinking of me, which is stupid in the long run, but I seem to focus on that a lot of the time and I don't know, my overthinkingness just gets out of hand and it kind of goes down like a rabbit hole basically and just goes into the spiral effect of chaos and and it's kind of hard honestly because I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm doing all of this alone like I feel sometimes I'm just so alone and so sad and I just feel like no one fucking cares and that's what was like going through my mind that Sunday morning so after I wrote the note I wanted to I guess end my life and so I thought of a plan on doing so. Uh, if you feel like you don't feel like watching this because it's going to go into suicide stuff and to me being in the mental hospital, um, you may not want to watch it if you are triggered by it. So this is the trigger warning. So anyways, so I drove over to Bobby's place and then I ended up taking a lot of pills and like a lot of pills, I don't know, like 30 or so pills. I was t t handing Bobby the note and telling him that I wanted to kill myself and end my life and that I was going to go drive off a cliff, <laughs> which sounds insane like when I say that out loud, but 
that was my intent at the time. So 911 was called. The police came, the fire department came, and also the um, ambulance came. And finally the cops and everybody talked me down. And then um, kind of refused not to go to the hospital because I didn't feel like I needed to, but they took me to the hospital. I was in the emergency room for like, I think a while. I was, I got there around noon, I think. And I was feeling super sick and woozy. I don't know, probably from the pills. Anyways, it was like super cold there. And so I was like alone for like seven hours. So I really felt like no one seemed to care. Like that moment, it just seemed to like reinforce my feelings that no one wanted to, I don't know. It was not like anyone would have showed up anyways because no one really knew what was happening around seven o'clock. And then that's when they took my phone because I was texting Bobby at the time because he was wondering where I was at because he mentioned that he dropped off my things or like some pairs of clothes and stuff at the um, hospital here in Grand Junction. But they didn't have any beds, so they had to transfer me like <laughs> freaking 500 miles away basically to a different facility in the middle of the night. Um, I slept all the way. So the transport people were like super nice and they fed me Wendy's and bought me Wendy's and I enjoyed the meal so it was like super good. I woke up and I didn't know where I was at the time. Like I didn't know at the time I was heading to Colorado Springs. Like I knew where I was going obviously but I didn't think about it at the time until like I was there. I was like I don't know where I'm at. I went in there, um, they checked me in and all this stuff, just went straight to bed. Like. So it was like a more open kind of space where like the um, patients came out and like did their own thing when like this little group, I guess, living room, I would say, I don't know how else to put it. But there was like separate bedrooms and I had a roommate. So then I woke up the next day I met with the psychiatrist there and then a ton of people and just, I felt like I kept repeating the same story and they kept asking like, why do you want to kill yourself then? I rambled on about like certain things and certain problems I've been dealing with, like a lot of things and like there's stupid things that I'm dealing with that don't even make sense and sometimes I feel like I'm making it up in my head and sometimes I feel like it's real and then sometimes my I don't even know that my own actions cause other people pain and I just keep going and like I just feel like I'm a tornado just wrecking everything and destroying everything in my path and then I sometimes I don't feel like I can stop myself I just feel like sometimes I don't deserve happiness and I really don't know the cause of all that I just don't it's not like I'm messed up or anything I do normal things obviously I pay lots of bills lots of fucking bills I am sometimes spontaneous and reckless and I do things on a whim and not think about choices I make and I don't I do it without thinking about the repercussions of things all the time I just feel I'm so alone out here and I feel like I can't do anything and I just feel like what the fuck is this all for you know all this stress about paying all these bills about stress about posting a new video and I enjoy posting the new videos like I do enjoy it because I want this channel to grow but sometimes the backlash it causes in my personal life like I get that I don't have a lot of following but it's what some people aim towards to do to try to hurt me and I I don't know why but it's like am I really that bad of a person to people do I really treat people that bad but sometimes I feel like I'm just quiet I'm just really quiet and I'm shy and sometimes I can have like a fucking bitch face, but resting bitch face, I guess. But it's just, and sometimes I just don't express how I feel and I keep it all bottled inside until it freaking explodes like a volcano. And when it does, it causes stuff like this to happen where I end up in a freaking mental hospital. I was put on a 72, 72 hour hold by a police officer in Grand Junction. Uh, he said he was concerned about my health, but Bobby came obviously he was being super supportive He came and visited drove freaking all this way and um, all that way and 
At least he was there, and then my parents and family were concerned, so they called. And then, um, anyways, I am. Um, I was like super scared, and I kept having like these anxiety attacks and panicky all the time. And being without my phone too was a struggle at first because I'm constantly on my phone, I'm constantly checking things and trying to be social and not feel like I'm alone in this world. Second, so basically the first day I was there. So I slept overnight. The first day I was there, um, Bobby came to visit me later in that day. But I also like, from the, I guess, effects of the pills I took, uh, they were some kind of type of antipsychotic pills or something like that. I had like these weird neck spasm things, which like super scary. They like literally scared me to death because I felt like I was choking. I felt like I couldn't control my body. My anxiety level was so high. Like I couldn't feel like I could sit still. I felt like I was going crazy. Like the inside of me was just like crawling and it was just super weird. And anyways, I ended up on the freaking floor like spazzing out basically. And I looked like, I just felt like I was a freak because I felt like I couldn't control my body. But I was there, like I was there, but I wasn't there at the same time, if that makes sense. Like I felt like I was seeing myself from like the outside. And I don't know, it was like the scariest thing ever. So they gave me some pills to um, calm down. And then they made me sleepy so I took a long nap. And then uh, the food in there was actually good, not gonna lie. I met a lot of interesting people in there, and most of them were normal, you know? There's this one lady, she <laughs> told me that. She's like, why, why do that to yourself? Why? And a lot of people ask me, why? Why do I seem to want to just end my life? And there's like, I feel like you can't say this so loud. There's a small portion of me that always is and always will feel like that as a plan Z, I guess. Alternative plan if things don't work out in my life. It was a very interesting experience being in the mental hospital and being in that sort of environment. I had to make a, like, a plan and all this stuff and like plan to meet with a psychiatrist, plan to meet with um, my therapist every Friday after I exit the hospital, so I've been trying to do that. Um, it's kind of difficult because the therapy sessions are kind of weird and, and I meet with like different people every single time. So I feel like I have to explain my story every single time. This one night, I think it was like the second night, this lady was screaming about a purse. She was literally screaming on top of her lungs about um, the hospital staff losing like a purse with 150 grand in it. I was like, $150,000, are you serious? Why would you even have that amount of cash on you? I'm like, that seems insane, but that's just me. But anyway, she was screaming for like four hours and no one could go to sleep. It was the weirdest thing ever. I don't know why I do this to myself. I seek to harm myself and not feel like I deserve to be happy. I even tattooed a, uh, tattooed myself with saying be happy. There was like this sign on Pinterest, it was for fake tattoos, but yeah, I thought it was super cool. And it was like all in gold. And anyways, I tattooed it to like my right thigh. And to remind myself, you know, to be happy, to just live life to the fullest. I overthink everything. I seem to overanalyze everything. And I keep rethinking all these events that happened in the past that and I just need to realize that I need to forget or overcome those thoughts or overcome those feelings about those moments and move on and enjoy life before it seems to run away from you. I've been doing this since I was 16. I feel like I've been struggling with this for a while now. After I came out, it was just a huge struggle after running away, after partying like crazy at 17 years old at Fort Lewis College and making a wreck out of things. I mistakenly have a guy fall in love with me, which I wasn't emotionally ready for at the time. We were spending on credit cards like freaking crazy. <laughs> Going to 
Aspen in the middle of the night to go see 21 Pilots. Drive all the way to Tucson to see family. Overspend on everyone for Christmas and try to make it the best it could be. And all these events that I think about and it's just like, oh my God, what are you doing sometimes? What are you really doing, Sean? What do you want in this life? Is what I always ask myself. And sometimes I feel like I can't even answer that question because it seems like too big of a question because I, there's things I want, obviously. There's th goals that I want in my life. And ever since I met Bobby, honestly, I felt like I've been treated the best. I feel like he, out of all people, seems to always be there, which is a really cool thing. And sometimes I take advantage of that. And I don't appreciate how much he is there for me in my life. Like, he's really there. He's a really good guy. I, I don't know if we'll ever get back together or not, or what's happening, but I do love the guy so much. Like, so much. Like, I really can thank him enough for everything. So, if you're watching this by me, thanks. I don't know, I never seem to thank people. I never, I think the real problem is, <laughs> out of all of this, is that I seem to focus everything on myself. And the world doesn't revolve around me, obviously. The world doesn't revolve around anyone, I think. Um, but in your head, you think that. In your head, yes, you are with yourself the entire, your entire life. Sometimes I feel like I'm too focused on myself and I need to focus on other people. And maybe if I focus on other people, I wouldn't worry about my own happiness and finding happiness in other outlets besides it's just my opinion on my view on my suicide if that makes sense so just mine it doesn't apply to anyone else's but kind of I feel like it's a bit selfish to kill yourself because you not only do harm to yourself and your friends your family the gas station lady that seems to act like your mom your co-workers your I become friends and just a lot of people and I thank all you guys every single person I've met in my life they have always but been almost nice to me a lot of people honestly I can think of a lot of people that haven't but the things I tend to focus on are the good things and you gotta learn from the bad things but don't dwell on them and Remember the good things because when it's good, it's freaking good. And I need to capture life before it escapes. Because if I keep going in the circle and I keep going in this self-destruct mode, I'm not going to get anywhere where I want to. I need to apply myself and actually try. And I keep saying this and I keep iterating to myself that I need to start moving on doing it. But... I don't know. I just need maybe a day to figure out what I want to do with my life. I need to figure out if I want to go get my bachelor's degree again. Or, you know, seek to get my bachelor's degree. Or seek to get a better job. Seek to be more financially stable. Seek to enjoy things. Because I want to do things. I want to travel. I want to see the world. I want to live life. And I don't know, but I am tired of this feeling. I'm tired of this cloud over my head. I'm tired of it. The other day I realized that being, so I'm so dumb, but I celebrate my half birthday and I don't know, I do this thing on this channel. Anyways, uh, you guys that have like been here from the start, you guys know I celebrate my half birthday. Well, every year I, seem to get a tattoo around my half birthday so I get I have like four so far and I'm gonna get my fifth one which is exciting because I'm gonna make this whole arm into like a sleeve which I think would be super cool but um anyways I realized that I'm I turned 22 and a half I know it's stupid <laughs> saying that out loud now but anyways 
not the point. Mathematic, math, thinking math wise. Um, so thinking math wise, 22 and a half is the middle ground between 20 and 25. So I am closer to 25 than I am to 20. And that's scary because after 25, you're close to 30. And you know, there's goals I want to be at before I'm 30. And I just need to figure this stuff out. I just need to set goals for myself and seek the good, good you know? Not dwell in drama, not dwell in what celebrities are doing, not dwell on like this dumb things that don't really matter. And I just need to focus on things that make me happy and find healthy things that make me happy because I've done the clothes thing. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on clothes. I only know that because of my credit card bills. And that doesn't make me happy. Shopping doesn't make me happy. Or try to seek happiness all the time. But sometimes I need to realize I just need to enjoy what I have now. Enjoy that I am actually okay. I don't know. Life's complicated. <laughs> um, so, I, this is kind of like the end of the video. I really don't know what else to say about this video. There's not really any heartfelt moment about it. I just feel like talking about it because it's been an issue I feel like I need to talk about and let out because I feel like it's just like inside of me and I need to get it out and open and really don't know if I'm gonna post this video or not, but I just wanna let you know that I am okay. I am fine. You don't need to worry about me. I am not in that frame of mind anymore. It's been almost two months since that happened. I think I need to talk to doctors about this and this feeling because I feel like I've struggled with this feeling for the longest time and I just need to figure out what it is and yeah. And I just wanna be honest with you guys because sometimes I feel like I'm not myself in videos and I feel like I try to fake it some days and I don't know. If you guys have any struggles with, I don't know, being lonely, uh, tell me about it in the comments below or message me on one of my social media sites. They'll all be in the description box down below. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Uh, we're almost at 1,200 subscribers, which is crazy. That's all I really got to say for now, guys. But uh, the next video, I promise, will be more interesting, more happy, more less depressing. Sorry. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.